everybody. This is Pastor Tim. How are y'all doing? Uh, this is our Sunday morning service for Real Point Church of God. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Uh, great and wonderful happy Father's Day to you. Hope you're having a good morning already. Hope you've had a great weekend. I'm going to bring you a word this morning talking about the fathers and talking about everybody uh, and everything. Um, but I, wanna, I just want to say, dads, you are an example to your children of who a godly person should be. I know moms are as well, but dads, you have a responsibility to your children to teach them the word, to show them how to live as a born again believer and to raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. It's, it's for you to raise them up to appreciate and to love God. Um, one thing that I think is wonderful is I have a little flower garden behind me you probably can't see them they're just beginning to sprout but it's right there at the base of the tree and, and one of the things that I had to do uh, for the flowers to begin to grow one of the things I had to do is I had to prepare the ground for them see dads you prepare the ground for your children you prepare their future you prepare for them what they're gonna grow in now, when you, you till up the ground and, and you break up the ground and all of that, and then you take these precious seeds, just like in the flower bed, you take these precious seeds and you plant them. And when you plant these precious seeds, God takes them and he begins to grow them. See, your job is to continuously tend them. See, they're only given to you for a season. And in that season, this is when you dads, you, you go in and you tend that garden. It's just like the other day I was out in my, my little, what I call my patio garden. I've planted a, a garden in our, on our patio with our fruits and vegetables and stuff like that out there on the garden. And as I was going through the garden, my little patio garden, I was moving leaves and looking around. And all of a sudden, I found this bug on there. And I thought, wait a minute, why, you know, I've... I've been fertilizing it, I've been watering it, I've been doing everything I need to do to it. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I start finding these little bugs in the garden. And I looked them up, and these bugs were called spittle bugs or sap suckers. And I was like, what in the world is going on? Where did they come from? I've never seen these before. And I've done a little gardening in my life. But they're little black bugs with two orange stripes across their back. And I, I looked them up. I began to, to check and see what they were. And I found out what they do is they go right to where the fruit's at on the, on the, uh, the vegetables or the fruit. Right there where you're like if your tomatoes are growing or your peppers are growing. And they will take and drink the sap out of, um, out of the stem that is going to the fruit. They're trying to steal the nutrients and let the fruit die. But you know, as a good gardener, what do you do? You go get something that takes care of that issue. You go out and get you some uh, uh, sevens dust or some pesticide or something like that or, 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 or uh, whatever it is that takes care of them. Uh, my pumpkin plants were growing and they were losing their bloom. Something kept pinching their blooms off. So I started researching that and then cut worms. What? They, they showed up and were eating my, my, uh, my pumpkin plants. And they would cut the bloom off before it even make any kind of produce, any kind of fruit. So I went in and, and I found out that if you put uh, ashes down around it, they don't like them so they won't climb on your plant. Did not know that, something new to me. So I did that and I've, I've got blooms and I think I'm starting to produce some, some uh, small uh, fruit on the vine right now. But see, these are things that come into play and as a father, you have to tend that plant. You have to tend your children. When I say tend your children, I mean this is where you come in and you tenderly find out the problem and you remove it from them. And you only get a short season that you get to do this in. Because what you're doing is you're teaching. You're showing your children how to grow up. You're protecting them from what you can. And that's what you do with your children, fathers, dads. This is what you do. Now, when they get grown, they'll grow up and they'll remember what you did for them. 
they'll remember that you were there to protect them from all of those insects. You were there to protect them from the pestilence and all of that stuff. You were there to protect them from the hard times. You were to help them produce fruit. Because you're tending a garden that God gave you, men. That's right. God gave you that garden. In Ephesians chapter 5, it talks about here that men are the head of their families. It says, Therefore, as much as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be subject unto their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. Now, I'm going to take that scripture, and a lot of people don't like that scripture, but I'm going to take that scripture as this. Dads, fathers, husbands, if Jesus Christ loved the church so much that he would die for the church, he would die for people who were still sinners, he would die for people who, who didn't even know him yet, but he would give his life and shed his blood for them, we as dads should be willing to sacrifice for our children. That's right. It's not our will be done, but our Father in Heaven's will that is done. See, as a dad, I want the very best for my children. As a dad, I want the very best for my wife. Or as a husband, I should say, I want the very best for my wife. So on this Father's Day, dads, you are in a position right now to where you affect a generation and a generation and a generation to come. Because what you do right now affects your family, affects your children, affects your grandchildren, affects your great-grandchildren. That is what you are. You are a father. See, you have a very, very important role in your family's life, in your community's life. See, when you show as a father you show them how good you are to your children in your community people then begin to go man i'm going to follow the example of him because he provides for his family man he's good to his wife he's good to his children he corrects them but he's good to them and man they they just love him that's because dad you follow the example of god God wanted the very best for us. And we as fathers should want the very best for our children. That doesn't mean you have to give them everything in the world. That means that you set an example of what it is to be a godly person in your children and your family's lives. And this is where I want us to flip over now to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I want us to, to read verse 8. And I want you to really think about this. Chapter 2 and verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. See, one of the key things that us dads need to do is we need to show our children that we are men of prayer and we are men of spiritual action and warfare we need to show our children and our families that we love we appreciate we we adore we want god in our lives and we need to show them how to have god in their lives so if you want to be a very effective you want to be a good dad then you show them jesus you show them how to get saved. You show them what it is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is your job. It's not just a duty. You should do it happily. Just like you tend your garden, right? Man, it starts to produce fruit and flowers begin to bloom. It makes you happy. As a gardener, man, you're like, wow, this is awesome. Everything's just beginning to bloom. I'm beginning to get the fruit of all of my labors and all of that. And see, dads, this is where you are like that gardener. 
you get to see your children bloom. You get to see them begin to produce fruit. Oh, hallelujah. And they become born-again believers. And they live a born-again life. And they begin to show their children, which would be your grandchildren, how to be born-again believers and how to live a born-again life. See, anybody can live a good life, but you've got to live a born-again life. Good don't get you to heaven. Only Jesus does. See, dads, that's the thing. You need to show them Jesus. You need to show them how to bloom through Christ Jesus. See, the Bible tells us that we're just a branch. Jesus is the stem. I'm going to go back to that little bug we were talking about. See, Jesus supplies all the nutrients that we need as Christians. Satan is like that little bug. He tries to drink those nutrients or, or, or steal those nutrients away from us. He tries to steal the nutrients away from our children with, with bombarding them with all the social media and all the television stuff and, and everything. And he wants to get their minds on stuff other than God. In this current climate we're in, it's easy to get distracted. And we don't pay attention. And dads, we have to pay attention as fathers. We have to pay attention to our wives. We have to pay attention to our children. We have to pay attention to our families. That is what we do. We are to love, to guide, to protect, to teach, to show, and to live God, to live Jesus in front of our families. And when those those pestilence come, those bugs come to try to steal the, the joy of the Lord and try to steal the life-giving flow that comes from Jesus. We're to pluck those bugs away and destroy them as dads and, and show them how to do it themselves. And, and this is the thing. As dads, you are that important to your family. Don't ever think that you're not important to your family. Don't ever think what you do is not important to your family because they watch you. They look at you. They want to be like you. They love you. Dads, did you not know you play such an important role in your children's lives? In your family's lives? In your wife's life? Husbands, don't you know that your wife, she wants a man that's going to provide she wants a man that's going to protect her. She wants a man that's going to love her with all their heart. She wants someone that's going to take her and adore her. She doesn't want an absentee husband. She doesn't want somebody to argue with her all the time. She doesn't want somebody that leases around the house and won't do anything. No. She wants a man. She wants a husband that's going to do these things. And see, if you're a real man, you'll do those things. And this is the thing. You'll show your sons how to be real men. Oh, hallelujah. Just like Christ showed us how to be real men. We need to follow that example and be real men. We need to be godly. We need to live a life that is, is so caught up in Jesus that we, as born-again believers, can take that message to our families in generation after generation after generation grow up to be men and women of God because you dad were a real man you were a God fearing God loving man who did what the Bible says you need to do what Jesus has showed us to do and to show our children the love of Christ feed our kids with the word take them to church show them what it is to be a born-again believer and you say well I don't have to carry them to church no that's not scriptural scriptural says forsake not the assembling together now that doesn't mean you have to show up at a building what we're doing right now on Facebook and on the internet we are assembling together as a body of believers and we are believing now we're gonna open our church back up soon but what I'm saying as we come together as believers, as a body of Christ, we teach our children to be part of that body of Christ. Part of that body of believers. A building's a building. The church is the people. And dads, show your children 
how to be that productive member of the church, a productive member of the body of Christ. Dads, you are important. Dads, you are needed. Dads, you are loved. Dads, I'm telling you, our Father in heaven, the Father of lights, gives good things. Give our children the best things. Give them God. Give them your attention. Give them your love. Show them who Christ is by living for Christ Jesus. Show your wife what a real man is by living for Christ Jesus. That's right. Real men love Jesus. Real men follow the word of God. Real men do what the Bible says do. Real men protect, love, and cherish. That's what real men do. Now, fathers, it's on you now. Be a godly man and a godly dad. And have your children grow up to be godly children because they will follow your example. Now, I'm not here to, I'm not bashing dads. I'm giving you an applause. If you're a born-again believer, if you're a born-again dad, and you're showing your kids the word, and you're teaching them the word, and you're showing them a godly life, whoo, hallelujah, I give you applause right now. But dad, if you need Jesus, oh, hallelujah, if you need Jesus, this is a time right now that you can make that change and you can become a born-again believer. And you can lead your ch children in Christ. At this very moment, if you don't know who Jesus is, this is for anybody. This is your day. Because the Father in heaven, says the Bible says the Father of light sends down good things. Well, getting saved is a good thing. It's a great thing. It's the most important thing. So today, I ask you, if you'll pray this prayer, and ask God into your life, I believe you'll become born again. You say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, God. I ask you to take away all of my downfalls. Change my life, God. All these things that I do that are not good, Lord God, take them from me. Take the urges from me, Lord God. Uh, take the addictions from me, Lord God. Remove these things from me that stop me from being your child, God, and forgive me of all of my sins, Lord God, and begin to work on me and turn me around 180 degrees, God. God, right now, I ask you to come into my life, purge all of my sins, and make me that new creature in Christ. And right now, I receive you, God, as not just my Savior, but also the Lord who rules my life. And I ask you change me completely and utterly, and I thank you for doing it, God, because I receive it right now. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I believe if you prayed that prayer out of earnest heart, that you're a born-again believer right now. It's time for you to start on that road of being the best dad you can be, the best Christian you can be. And if you weren't a, if you weren't a dad or you're not a dad, or you're not, you know, if you just got born again, it's time to start that path. It's time to start that walk right now in Jesus. And God will do it for you. God will show you. Now, if you're a believer, and you've got something going on today, and you need healing, I feel this. If you need healing, I want you to anoint yourself where you need the healing. Uh... Anointing oil, we usually use olive oil. You don't have to. All you need to do is just pray over it, consecrate it to God, take that anointing oil, put it on that, that, that knee or that back or that shoulder, and begin to pray in the name of Jesus, by the holy anointed blood of Jesus, by his stripes I am healed. And I believe God's going to begin to heal you right now. I believe that God is healing people right now. That's right. God is a God that wants the best for you. God wants your healing. If you don't have anointing oil, right now, I feel this. Right now, you need to just lay hands on your body, wherever it may be, that you're feeling bad or you're hurting or anything like that. I want you to lay hands on it and begin to pray in faith, believing that God is healing you right now. 
that God is taking care of that situation right now. Now, if you have a testimony about God healing you today, I want you to put it in, in the comments or uh, 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 in everything and tell us, give us your testimony of how God touched you. See, God is that good. He's that wonderful. He's that gracious and he's that mighty. And he wants the very, very best for you. That is our God. That's how good he is. Now, I'm going to tell you that God wants you to live an overcoming life. And believer, you have to believe he, he wants you to have that. And if you'll believe it, you'll receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you want to send in a donation, you want to give, you want to send your tithes and offerings in. You can send them in at our website, rpcchurchofgod.com. Click on the Give button. It'll take you to a place where you can give online. You can use a debit card or credit card there. If you want to just mail it in, you can mail it in to P.O. Box 369, Lepanto, Arkansas, 72354. Make sure you make it out to Real Point Church of God. And when you give, and I feel this just, just a moment, I don't pull for money. But if you give, God does give back. If you pay your tithes, God rebukes the devourer from your home. He rebukes the devourer from you, and, and, and he will bless you. But you've got to do it out of an earnest and a loving heart, wanting to give it to God. But I just wanted to say that. Because a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people will also say this to you. Well, that's in the law. No. Abraham gave to Melchizedek. When he gave to Melchizedek, that was way before the law ever happened. And Jesus Christ said he was from the order of Melchizedek. So when you give tithes and you give offerings to your local church, you're actually giving those to Jesus Christ. And it advances his kingdom. With that this morning, God bless you. Have a happy Father's Day. Hopefully somebody will cook you a steak and everything. With that, God bless you. May you have a wonderful day with your family and have a blessed and wonderful, great weekend. And may revival start in your home. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and we'll see you next time.